Hi, this is Mark Berkler, and today I'm sharing a podcast about Sue Cayley. It's her testimony of how she received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I have uh, 20 of those testimonies collected from 20 different people, and I'll be sharing all 20 in 20 different podcasts because I believe we can learn so much from people's stories. The Bible is a storybook full of real-life stories of real-life encounters with Almighty God. So let's listen to Sue as she shares her story. The name of her uh, testimony is, Multiple Fillings with the Holy Spirit Brought Me Alive. I had been a Christian for about six years, and I was feeling that my heart towards Jesus had grown cold. My prayer life was practically non-existent. My walk with the Lord was superficial, and I kept thinking there must be more than this. So I kept sending up prayers to God, asking him to fill me with the Holy Spirit. At the same time, I was scared as I didn't know what would happen. The Toronto blessing had happened and God had poured out his spirit in certain places in England where I live. I met in my hometown with a youth worker and she prayed with me and the Holy Spirit filled me. Now this filling happened in stages. I was filled more powerfully in my quiet times. Then at a conference at Holy Trinity Brompton, God's power went down into my head and through my body and I felt drunk. I was so hungry for more of Jesus. I felt like I had woken up. I was given a new joy in God, a new love for Jesus that has never left. My prayer life was transformed. I've rec I received pictures, Bible verses, and I heard the Lord speak to me within. I had a deep desire to encourage other Christians, and I still have. This has gone on for 20 years. At a Christian conference, a lady in a prayer team asked if she could pray for me. And as she prayed, I heard an inner voice, which I seemed to know was God the Father. He said, I want you to join in partnership with me to pray for what's on my heart. This urging or inner nudging became so insistent that I just said to God one day, Father, will you show me what's on your heart? And immediately a picture came into my mind of a statue of Jesus standing with his arms opened over a city. Then the Holy Spirit interceded through me with groans and sighs. I had never experienced this before, but I felt like I was in the school of the Spirit. And then I prayed for revival for that place. Since then, for the last 15 years, I ask the Father who or what is on his heart. Sometimes I see in my mind the name of a country or people group, like the Aborigines or a people group in China. Sometimes I see in my mind actual people, like the Del Lama, as in God's heart, which surprised me. Sometimes I feel God's pain in my heart for those whom he leads me to pray for. Sometimes the country will be in the news after I prayed for it. Something I will never forget is Rwanda and the massacre between the tribes there. The Spirit caused me to do physical actions of wrestling for them. I had never thought much about speaking in tongues, but at the Holy Trinity Brompton Conference, the minister said, if anyone would like to speak in tongues, come forward to be prayed for. I was hungry for everything God wanted to give me, so I went forward and a lady prayed for me to be given that gift and told me to open my mouth in faith and see what happens. <laughs> I must admit, I felt embarrassed, but I wasn't going to miss out on what God had for me. I went for it and I started speaking in words that I didn't understand. When I talked to God in tongues, he draws near. I also sang in tongues, which sounded beautiful. The notes seemed to come from my heart. As I sang, it felt like I was being refreshed too. The most precious thing that happened as a result of being filled with the Holy Spirit is an intimate relationship with Jesus. A friend rang me who was ill and I immediately felt the Lord's presence. 
all through our conversation, I kept getting pictures of encouragement to the effect that this illness is not going to be part of her life story, which God has planned for her life. After I came off the phone, to my surprise, the Holy Spirit's power and God's presence flowed into my heart, and at the same time, the Holy Spirit's power and presence flowed out from within my heart. This went on for a long time, and I asked the Lord, what happens next? And I heard him say within me, the only way is up. I had been feeling dry, and I was crying out to God for a fresh filling of his spirit. Now, I have a freedom when I pray for people and a new freedom and intimacy with God, the Father and Jesus, a hunger to press in for more of Jesus, and I want God's plan for my life wherever he wants to take me. I want to go with him. Interestingly, a few months ago during my prayer time, Jesus said, welcome the Holy Spirit. So I started to do that and before I pray, and the Holy Spirit's presence is more evident in my prayer times. I feel like he is my friend and helper, and I want to be more sensitive to him. I would say to any believer that the Lord has more for you. Don't settle for little. Keep asking the Lord for more. Press in with boldness. I believe God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I want to do the things that Jesus did and I believe that we are meant to do so. The Lord keeps bringing Isaiah 61 to my mind. Our God is an awesome God. So as we ponder Sue's testimony, as she re was received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, she re received God's voice and vision and burden with that. And she talks about spontaneous thoughts lighting upon her mind, spontaneous pictures lighting upon her mind, and then feeling the emotion of God pour into her and to pour out through her. So what I've learned to do and what I encourage all of us to do is to invite Jesus and the Holy Spirit to be with us, um, ask questions, tune to flowing thoughts, flowing pictures, flowing emotions, believing that those are God's voice, God's vision, and God's emotion, and then release them into the world, because I believe they truly are. If you'd like to check out all 20 of these stories, you can go to our website, cwgministries.org, and in the search bar, if you just type in 20 testimonies, it will take you to a hyperlink of, of all 20 blogs, and all, all 20 podcasts are connected to those blogs. All right. Blessings for now. We'll catch you later.